Chapter 0 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt is an introduction to the book's main theme, that the art of economics consists of looking not only at the immediate but also at the longer-term effects of any economic policy. Hazlitt argues that the consequences of any policy must be judged not by the immediate effects on a particular group, but by its long-term effects on all groups. He states that the art of economics requires an understanding of the chain of consequences that any policy will have, and that the consequences of any policy must be judged not by the immediate effects on a particular group, but by its long-term effects on all groups. Hazlitt also argues that the consequences of any policy must be judged not only by its effects on the production of goods and services, but also by its effects on the distribution of wealth and income. He further states that the consequences of any policy must be judged not only by its effects on the present generation, but also by its effects on future generations. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the consequences of any policy must be judged not only by its effects on the economic well-being of individuals, but also by its effects on the social and psychological well-being of individuals. Chapter 1 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt begins by discussing the broken window fallacy, which is the idea that destruction can be beneficial to an economy. Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the money spent to repair the window could have been used to purchase something else, and the resources used to repair the window could have been used to create something else. He then goes on to discuss the unseen consequences of economic decisions, arguing that while the immediate effects of an economic decision may be beneficial, the long-term effects may be detrimental. He uses the example of a government subsidy to a certain industry, arguing that while the subsidy may benefit the industry in the short term, it may lead to a misallocation of resources in the long term. He then goes on to discuss the idea of economic want, arguing that while it is important to satisfy immediate wants, it is also important to consider the long-term effects of economic decisions. He concludes by arguing that economics is not a zero-sum game and that it is possible to create wealth through economic decisions. Chapter 2 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the concept of the broken window fallacy. Hazlitt argues that the broken window fallacy is a common misconception that destruction can be beneficial to an economy. He explains that when a window is broken, it appears that the glazier who is hired to repair it has benefited from the destruction. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case. He explains that the money spent on the glazier is money that could have been spent on something else, such as a new suit or a new book. Therefore, the broken window has actually caused a net loss to the economy. Hazlitt also explains that the broken window fallacy can be applied to government spending. He argues that government spending is often seen as beneficial to the economy, but in reality, it is just a transfer of resources from one group to another. Hazlitt concludes that the broken window fallacy is a dangerous misconception that can lead to economic disaster. Chapter 3 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of the broken window fallacy. Hazlitt argues that the broken window fallacy is the idea that destruction can be beneficial to an economy. He explains that this fallacy is based on the idea that when a window is broken, the money spent to repair it is seen as a benefit to the economy because it creates jobs for the glazier. However, Hazlitt argues that this is a false assumption because the money spent on the window could have been spent on something else, such as a new suit or a book, which would have created jobs in other industries. He also argues that the broken window fallacy ignores the opportunity cost of the broken window, which is the value of the best alternative that was not chosen. In other words, the money spent on the window could have been spent on something else, and the opportunity cost of the broken window is the value of the best alternative that was not chosen. Hazlitt also argues that the broken window fallacy ignores the unseen effects of the broken window, such as the fact that the money spent on the window could have been saved and used for something else in the future. He concludes by arguing that the broken window fallacy is a false assumption and that destruction is not beneficial to an economy. 
Chapter 4 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of unseen costs and benefits. Hazlitt argues that when making economic decisions, people often focus on the immediate, visible effects of a policy or action, while ignoring the long-term, unseen effects. He uses the example of a bridge being built to illustrate this concept. The immediate, visible effects of the bridge are the jobs created for the workers who build it, the money spent on the materials, and the increased convenience of having a bridge. However, the unseen effects are the money that could have been spent on other projects, the resources that could have been used elsewhere, and the taxes that must be raised to pay for the bridge. Hazlitt argues that these unseen costs and benefits must be taken into account when making economic decisions. He also argues that the same principle applies to government policies, such as tariffs and subsidies. He concludes that while it is important to consider the immediate, visible effects of a policy, it is equally important to consider the long-term, unseen effects. Chapter 5 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of unseen costs and benefits. Hazlitt argues that when making economic decisions, it is important to consider both the seen and unseen costs and benefits. He explains that when a decision is made, the seen costs and benefits are immediately apparent, but the unseen costs and benefits are often overlooked. Hazlitt uses the example of a bridge being built to illustrate his point. The seen benefits of the bridge are the jobs created and the convenience of having a bridge. The unseen costs are the resources that could have been used elsewhere, such as in the construction of a hospital or school. Hazlitt also discusses the idea of unintended consequences, which are the unforeseen results of an action. He argues that these unintended consequences can often be more significant than the intended consequences. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the unseen costs and benefits should be taken into account when making economic decisions. He states that if the unseen costs and benefits are not taken into account, then the decision may be misguided and lead to unintended consequences. Chapter 6 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is the same for everyone, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done by those with the necessary skills and resources. Chapter 7 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. 
Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is available, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is the same for everyone, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is available, then more work can be done by those who are better able to use it. Chapter 8 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is the same for everyone, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done by those with the necessary skills and resources. Chapter 9 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is the same for everyone, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done by those with the necessary skills and resources. Chapter 10 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. 
Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is the same for everyone, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested in certain areas, then more work can be done in those areas. Chapter 11 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is available, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is the same for everyone, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is available, then more work can be done by those who are better able to use it. Chapter 12 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is available, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is the same for everyone, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is available, then more work can be done by those who are better able to use it. Chapter 13 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. 
Chapter 14 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Chapter 15 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Chapter 16 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Chapter 17 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. 
However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Chapter 18 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false one, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that there is a fixed amount of work to be done, and that if it is spread out among more people, it will be done more quickly. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work to be done is not fixed, and that spreading the work does not actually increase the amount of work done. He further argues that spreading the work can actually be detrimental, as it can lead to a decrease in productivity as well as an increase in costs. He concludes by arguing that the idea of spreading the work is a false one, and that it should not be used as a basis for economic policy. Chapter 19 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false one, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that there is a fixed amount of work to be done, and that if it is spread out among more people, it will be done more quickly. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work to be done is not fixed, and that spreading the work does not actually increase the amount of work done. He further argues that spreading the work can actually be detrimental as it can lead to a decrease in productivity, as well as an increase in costs. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on a false premise, and that it should be avoided. Chapter 20 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false one, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that there is a fixed amount of work to be done, and that if it is spread out among more people, it will be done more quickly. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work to be done is not fixed, and that spreading the work does not actually increase the amount of work done. He further argues that spreading the work can actually be detrimental as it can lead to a decrease in productivity, as people are less likely to work hard when they are working with others. He concludes by arguing that the idea of spreading the work is a false one, and that it should not be used as a justification for government intervention in the economy. Chapter 21 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of economic rent and how it affects the economy. Hazlitt explains that economic rent is the payment made to a factor of production in excess of what is necessary to keep it in its current use. He argues that economic rent is not a productive activity and does not add to the wealth of a nation. He further explains that economic rent is a form of unearned income and is not a reward for productive effort. Hazlitt then goes on to discuss the effects of economic rent on the economy. He argues that economic rent can lead to a misallocation of resources, as it encourages people to invest in land and other resources that are not productive. He also argues that economic rent can lead to a decrease in the amount of capital available for productive investment, as it diverts resources away from productive activities. 
Finally, Hazlitt argues that economic rent can lead to a decrease in the wages of workers, as it reduces the amount of money available for wages. Chapter 22 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Chapter 23 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of economic rent and how it affects the economy. Hazlitt explains that economic rent is the payment made to a factor of production in excess of what is necessary to keep it in its current use. He argues that economic rent is not a productive activity and does not add to the wealth of a nation. He further explains that economic rent is a form of unearned income and is not a reward for productive effort. Hazlitt then goes on to discuss the effects of economic rent on the economy. He argues that economic rent can lead to a misallocation of resources, as it encourages people to invest in land and other resources that are not productive. He also argues that economic rent can lead to a decrease in the amount of capital available for productive investment, as it diverts resources away from productive activities. Finally, Hazlitt argues that economic rent can lead to a decrease in the wages of workers, as it reduces the amount of money available for wages. Chapter 24 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is available, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is available, then more work can be done. Chapter 25 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false one, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that there is a fixed amount of work to be done, and that if it is spread out among more people, it will be done more quickly. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work to be done is not fixed, and that spreading the work does not actually increase the amount of work done. 
He further argues that spreading the work can actually be detrimental, as it can lead to a decrease in productivity, as people are less likely to work hard when they know that their efforts will be shared with others. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on a false premise, and that it is not a viable solution to the problem of unemployment. Chapter 26 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false economy, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that if everyone works fewer hours, then more people can be employed, and thus more work will be done. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work done is determined by the amount of capital available, not the number of people employed. He further explains that if the amount of work is spread out among more people, then the amount of work done will actually decrease, as each worker will have less time to work and will be less productive. Hazlitt also argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on the false assumption that the amount of work available is fixed, when in reality it is not. He explains that the amount of work available is determined by the amount of capital available, and that if more capital is invested, then more work can be done. Chapter 27 of Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt focuses on the idea of spreading the work. Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is a false one, as it does not actually increase the amount of work done, but instead only redistributes it. He explains that the idea of spreading the work is based on the assumption that there is a fixed amount of work to be done, and that if it is spread out among more people, it will be done more quickly. However, Hazlitt argues that this is not the case, as the amount of work to be done is not fixed, and that spreading the work does not actually increase the amount of work done. He further argues that spreading the work can actually be detrimental, as it can lead to a decrease in productivity as people are less likely to work hard when they know that their efforts will be shared with others. Finally, Hazlitt argues that the idea of spreading the work is based on a false premise, and that it is not a viable solution to the problem of unemployment.